Hey everyone, Creatively Kara here, and my channel is all about taking you along on my creative journey with me. Today we're going to be taking a look at some weekly spread ideas that I made in February that are basically surrounding just some watercolor theme ideas. I just used some Tombow markers and water, and honestly that's how I got a lot of my watercolor with this one. I used a few different techniques for each weekly setup, so I'll just kind of explain them as we go. All the supplies I'll be using today, I will be linking in the description box down below. And I'll also link to my February plan with me in case you're interested in kind of seeing how I set up the rest of the month as well with this theme. But the first weekly spread I set up, some of you may have seen this from my plan with me, but it was pretty fun. I just did a little art down the middle and then made the days on the sides and it was pretty simple to set up. I measure my stuff out using this line spacing guide and it's kind of inspired from a few different bullet journalers. I think I first really saw it from Amanda Rach Lee, but I've seen it from a few others as well. It really helps when creating your spreads because then you have something to help kind of guide you and you don't have to count every time or do the math every time because I'm a person that does not like doing math. Let's be real here. Anyways, this is a different technique. The first technique I used on the weekly spread was with a, a plastic bag and then I like drew the color on that and used water to spread the color on the paper. This time around I decided to do just draw some purple and pink on the paper and then I used my aqua brush to add in some water and spread that around. And I really love how this one turned out. It was sort of random <laughs> when I went to create it but I really love the colors in this and just how the watercolor is spread out throughout it. I felt like the top and bottom need needed a little bit as well, so I decided to add some watercolor to the top and bottom there, and I'm really glad I did because that made a big difference. And then this is my Pentel brush. It's one of my favorite brush pens. Pentel has a good line that I, I have. I thought I'd just do a quick little hand lettering here for each day of the week and since each day had its own box I had a little left over the bottom and usually I just make that like a place for notes but sometimes I'll include doodles or something instead. Right now I track all of my habits and mood monthly so I don't have any trackers or anything that I really include weekly. I'm considering changing that up a little bit soon just to try something new, but it's kind of hard because once you find something that works for you when you bullet journal, it's kind of like, why change it? But I'm a person who likes change too because, um, you know, maybe what you're using is working for you, but maybe there's something that's better out there. I don't know. You won't know until you try. Back to the plastic bag technique, and I decided that I wanted to do some watercolor coming from the top down with a vertical spread. Honestly, vertical spreads aren't like my favorite, but I just have these moods where all of a sudden I really want to do one because sometimes your theme or whatever's in your head just works really well as a vertical layout. So I'll do one every now and then, but let me know in the comments below what your preference is for a weekly spread. Do you typically make yours vertical or do you make them horizontal or are yours just kind of random? I mean, sometimes you, I, I've seen some bullet journalers just like, be like, all right, Monday's going to be up in this corner, Tuesday's over here, Wednesday's over here. So it's kind of just sporadic and not really any um, specific organization to it, which I think is completely fine as well if that is what your preference is. But anyways, let me know in the comments below how you like to set up your weekly spreads. I think the idea I had in my head was basically these vines coming down and I'm like, oh, that'll work really well in a vertical format. So here we are drawing some vertical vines. And Milo did decide to make an appearance in this video. He's in a couple other of the weekly spreads as well, but... I just hit my two year anniversary mark on YouTube, yay! So I created a video of a compilation of Milo interrupting me while I bullet journal or while I'm being creative. Um, so if you have not checked that out, I highly recommend you do. It's got some good laughs in it. I will link to it in the description box down below and also in the cards. I did measure this out, but for some reason that first find on the the right page I made too far out so it looks a little off on the spacing but 
ah, I'm kind of a go as you flow bullet journaler. So if I mess up, I mess up and I usually just go with it. Uh, but it, it's all right. It worked out for me anyways. The last weekly spread we have to set up is going to the quarter boxes. I love quarter boxes. They work so well for me. This one was another one where I kind of just did it as I went. I, I really love doing my weekly spreads like this. I don't know how many of you really like plan out your weekly spreads intensely or if you just start with a small idea in your head and then go for it. Usually I'm the latter. So this one I started off thinking, okay, I know I want to do quarter boxes and I thought, okay, I think I'm going to do the watercolor as a border to outline each box. And then from there, I was like, okay, this needs a little bit more. I want to add in the botanicals. So the botanicals ended up actually being a part of the border as well. It's not how I quite envisioned it. You'll see when I'm first creating the botanicals, I'm kind of being sporadic when I'm drawing them out. But then when I move to do the rest of them, I actually just go in a line. So eventually I realized, okay, that's what I want to do. And on this one, I'm just using my Pentel brush pen. Sometimes the uh, Pentel brush pens work really well for like doodling. And so that's what I wanted to use here in this case. It just helps, you know, so you don't always have a consistent thickness in your line. And I think that that can sometimes be really cool when you're doodling to give a different kind of um, variation in the line thickness. But yeah, the utensils I use in my February setup are all very basic. Even if you had um, some other watercolor markers, there are a bunch of different kind of ones out there. It's pretty easy to do. I believe Crayola Super Tips actually work really well with the plastic bag technique as well, which is pretty cool because those are very affordable markers. And if you have some sandwich bags laying around, grab one of those and then you really don't need any fancy paintbrush or anything you just need like be able to, to make some water droplets and you're golden so pretty easy supplies on this one my cat is so cute he uh wanted to play with the strings he's he's such a cat he's always like oh you got this on your table yeah let me knock that off or oh you've got some strings i'm gonna eat them all yeah he loves strings definitely He's a very playful cat, but um, he's also very lovable. I mean, I, you probably can get that from the videos because he just wants to be with me. We'll have family or guests come over to our house and Milo's very welcoming. He always wants to see who's here and sniff them out and everything like that. He's very playful though. And so if you start playing with him too much, that's when he starts getting aggressive and like will really want to play with you, like biting and claws and all. So I always encourage people to not do that. Uh, but he does love to cuddle as well. He is super, super adorable and will just snuggle right up next to me. So he's a tough one he's super aggressive and playful but he's also super lovable so i'm glad that he's kind of got both sides to him i'm just using i had that little corner on the top and i thought i wanted to add a little something there i wasn't quite sure what i was going to do but i knew i wanted to use that plastic bag watercolor technique and then with that i wanted to include a quote as well and I thought a lot about what quote I wanted to use and I wanted something that kind of had to do with flowers or some sort of botanical. So the one I chose was even the tiniest of flowers can have the toughest roots. I tried to do some varying in fonts so I just kind of did all caps and then lowercase but then also included some faux calligraphy here. I'm still working on my style but I have fun just playing around with things. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Until next time, bye-bye.